no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending We got no plans Today on Moment of Clarity, I talk with Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein. I recently performed at a fundraiser for her here in New York City. Less than 24 hours later, after we talked, she was arrested for trying to enter the grounds of the presidential debate at Hofstra University. Apparently, her thoughts are so scary, they can't just be ignored. They have to be locked up. Let me know what you think. Are her thoughts scary? Should she be allowed into the debates? Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up if you like it, forward it to friends. And here now is presidential candidate Dr. Jill Stein. So one of the things that's uh, impressive about your candidacy, among many things, is uh, that you're a female, is that you're a woman. And, uh, but that's also, uh, you know, and I, I say a lot of things that are similar to what you say, just I do it with comedy, but one of the things I get from people, which uh, I know you're, you're maybe sick of the whole, uh, the whole spoiler argument, but is they say to me, yeah, but Obama's so important for women's rights. So I'm just wondering about your response to that. Right. Which you is know, kind of just a response yeah. in general to the yes. spoiler. Right. Ideas. Yeah, exactly. Because what Obama's done on women's rights is take some very small steps forward while he takes huge steps backwards for the rights of women and men and children and everybody together. So, right. you know, what, what, what has he done on women's rights? Well, you know, Maybe he looks good compared to the, uh, you know, the, the anti-abortion views of the Republican Party. But look, you know, we have um, Medicaid that prohibits abortions in about half the states, more than that even, mm -hmm. where poor women can't get abortions anyhow. You had Barack Obama take Plan B off the shelf where right. the FDA said, look, we can prevent abortions by making... Uh, family planning widely available so you don't have to have health insurance you don't have to have a prescription written by a doctor you don't have to spend all that money to be able to get uh, family planning you can just buy it over the counter that was available for all kinds of women poor women young women everybody and Obama just uh, flew in the face of medical science and by 60 public health and medical organizations and said, nope, sorry, you can't have family and that was planning. And that was even Sibelius too, wasn't it? Sibelius, yes. I, I think yeah. she sort of did the dirty work for Obama there. You know, yeah, maybe he's different uh, around the margins from the Republicans and the uh, anti-abortion mm -hmm. camp, but you know, it's like the difference between a ship that's sinking rapidly and a ship that's sinking slowly. Right. Neither are okay. You know, we need a lifeboat here, not just a ship that's going down slightly less to, quickly. To keep the ship analogy, I kind of view it as it's it's basically you can steer to the far right or you can steer to steer to the slight right, and both going into the iceberg, but we just keep vo vo voting for the one that's steering slightly to the right, and rather than thinking maybe we should go left, you know. Yeah, exactly, and maybe we should do what everyday people want. You know, even leaving aside questions of right, left, and ideology, yeah. what everyday people want yeah. right now, you know, it's pretty clear from the Occupy movement, from the fact that one out of every two Americans is uh, in poverty or heading towards it right now, you know, the fact that the top 1% has 40% of the wealth and the lower 50% has 1% of the wealth, you know, this is just, this doesn't work. What's wrong with this picture? It's just wrong from the get-go. And the people who say, Oh, I don't dare stand up. You know, I got to do this politics of fear thing. I'm too afraid mm -hmm. of what would happen. You know, that's exactly where they want you to be. They want you to be paralyzed by fear because the reality is that we are winning this battle already. Right. In fact, we've already won. If democracy had anything to do with it, we've already won. So it's all about the politics of courage. They don't want you to wake up to the politics of courage because it's the only way they keep us down. Which I think is what started to scare them so much about Occupy exactly. uh, was the fact that people were realizing they can have an effect and people were coming together and, and, and it, they knew they needed to stamp it out early because the idea of people having power scares the shit out of them. <laughs> and especially because Occupy you know, had broad public support behind it. You right. know, substantial majorities were saying, yeah, 
this is the right thing. The economy is broken. It shouldn't be run by Wall Street. Our democracy should not be run by Wall Street. Right. Very powerful. Exactly. As Alice Walker says, the biggest way we give up power is by not realizing we have it to start with. We do have it. And Occupy and, you know, the eviction blockades and the Keystone Pipeline blockades mm -hmm. and the, the Chicago Teachers Union, you know, in their strike and the student strikes to stop tuition hikes. You know, this is all about us realizing we have the power. The only power they have is the psychological power that they use to try to convince us that we are powerless. In right. fact, we are powerful. We have won this election and we have won this democracy right. and this economy the minute we realize it and we stand up. Two things, because I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to jump to uh, uh, the two things I want to ask you about. Are, one is the drug war. I want to hear your, your take on that. And then also the 5% that you mentioned out here in the speech, which I think a lot of people don't know about the 5% the goal you're trying to get to. Great. Yeah, so the drug war needs to end right away because it is a failed racist policy that has doubled the size of our jails in the last 15 years. It is a new Jim Crow. Uh, it's filled our jails with African Americans and Latinos, most of whom are nonviolent users, uh, recreational users of a substance which is far safer than alcohol and nicotine. And a president, if she wanted on her first day, could instruct right. the Drug Enforcement Agency to do a really, really radical thing, and that is to use science in determining what <laughs> what substances are and are not scheduled. Because right. the minute science right. is used, uh, you know, there goes hemp and there goes marijuana mm -hmm. off the list of most dangerous and scary drugs in the world. Yeah, not a lot of people overdosing on marijuana. Yeah, or dying from it either. That's what I mean, you know? dying from overdose. And marijuana is a substance which is dangerous because it's illegal. It's not illegal because it's dangerous. And that danger from prohibition is a real danger, which kills a lot of people, tens of thousands of Mexicans, for example, caught up in this drug war, and many in this country caught up in gang wars. And marijuana is the workhorse of the drug industry. So to legalize marijuana is to basically pull the rug right out from under the whole illegal enterprise and very violent public health threat. And uh, that last question about uh, just mention the 5% and why what the 5% goal means for the Green Party. Great. We went from undetectable to 1% to 2% in the polls, which is phenomenal and is far above where we've been for the last 10 years because we really are the one voice out there that is of, by, and for the people that's not bought and paid for by corporations and Wall Street and lobbyists and super PACs and all that. Mm -hmm. We're the one alternative. We're sort of a political voice for what Occupy is about. That and, if whole you get, and, and if you get to 5%, what's the deal? You're automatically on the ballot next time? Is exactly. That so that's the deal. If we can double those numbers, if okay. we can go a little more viral among students, 36 million students who are indentured servants, if they can get the word out, that they actually have a way to end it and end this indentured servitude, whether by winning the White House or winning the day by driving these solutions forward. We can do that by going to vote. So if we get the word out, if we go viral, if we get on the web, on Twitter, on Facebook, and let our friends know that they actually got something to vote for, double our numbers, come up from 2% to 4% plus a little more. At 5%, we are on the ballot, so we can hit the ground running in elections starting even this spring, as well as for the next four years and the next presidential. We're, we're automatically on the ballot. We can put our resources then into getting the word out. And in addition, we get a $20 million grant from the federal government to actually really run a race next time. Well, thank you so much, Jill and, uh, and the, or Dr. Stein. And, uh, Jill is and, and thank you for, uh, for keeping up the fight. Day awesome. in and day out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Keep us laughing. No plans at all. Evil man's always transcending. Fight her like sheep. Swallow everything. Always simple tins or pretend.